I'm Ross Bryant. I'm proud to represent Number 3 Gin, the result of years of tireless pursuit to create what we believe, and critics agree, is the world's best. The perfect London dry gin. But we're not stopping there. This year we're raising the glass for the Martini. But just as our gin wasn't created alone, we'll be speaking to top experts on our journey who share our like-minded spirit. We will examine each and every element from the liquid to the glass, the garnish and how it all comes together. Join me on this pursuit of perfection. Our first stop is Duke's Bar. The bar at the Duke's Hotel has, for the past 35 years, been home to a martini so unique that it's become a modern classic in its own right. And as quoted by the New York Times, one of the world's best. To have the only PhD in gin, how does that feel? How, does, how did that come about? I guess he's... Um... Really great. At least I think I'm the only one, so I've, I've not had anybody challenge that yet. Martini history, there's no hard and fast evidence to suggest where or when it was created, but there's obviously lots of stories. Do you have a particular favourite? Well, I think the one that uh, writers think is the probable origin is from the cocktail, the Martinez. The first ones were around in the 1860s, and here we are, 2021, um, and there is a revival of interest in the Martini as it's basically a mix of juniper, citrus and spice, you can't beat uh, really citrus as your garnish. That's really because flavour molecules that are in fresh lemon really complement those that are already uh, in the gin. Fashion's change in the drinks industry, don't they? But I think people eventually, when they want something satisfying and reliable, they, they would often venture back to a martini. Classic cocktails, martini obviously kind of leading the charge as well, are definitely seeing a resurgence at the moment. What's your take on this? I think many, many cocktail bars in London have been putting more classic twists on their menu, and this led like, people to recognise a classic drink and to be more confident at the bar to like, be able to order a drink. There is a big resurgence in the last couple of years. To have a great drink is not just the drink itself, but it's the atmosphere around you and like the experience that you're living. That will make like a great bar, I think. In your eyes, what makes the perfect martini? Martini, as a cocktail per se, is not very difficult to do it, but yet people still don't get it. So the three ingredients we actually did for a classic Sergin martini, cold glass, good spirit, preferably number three if you can, and an organic lemon. What is it about number three specifically that you think makes the perfect martini? I love gin. I want to taste the juniper. That's what you do with number three. Yeah. Simplicity. Like our martini. There's no raspberry inside, there's no melon, there's no uh, fruit salad inside or whatever. 46 ABV, which is a perfect for a classic uh, dry martini. And the six botanical, the simplicity. We're on the pursuit of the perfect number three martini. What is your definition of perfection? Perfection for me is the respect of the ingredients. I like to compare it to an orchestra or a choir. There's nothing nicer than an a cappella group of singers actually coming together. Each of them may have a fine voice, but when they come together, they sound fantastic. For me, like perfection is simplicity and attention to every single detail. What would be your piece of advice for us at number three on this pursuit to find the perfect martini? Don't change the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change the recipe. And with that, we leave Duke's Bar. In the next episode, our journey takes us to meet another special guest to see what goes into making the perfect martini glass. Hope you can join us.